Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Vesper. Someone did ask me in the comments in one of my videos to make a Vesper video. I don't really know how much detail they wanted, so I'm just going to do like a very basic understanding because some of the more advanced stuff requires drawing and I don't really want to draw. Um, I'll just try to explain the basics or whatever. I don't know. It's super easy to follow along, so I guess I'll just go right into it. So Vesper stands for Valence Sharing Electron Pair Repulsions. So the main reason of Vesper is to predict geometric shapes for molecules so electron pair geometry and the molecular geometry which we'll get into also keep in mind that lone pairs repulse more and this is going to come in handy when we start talking about lone pairs in molecules as opposed to having like a perfect linear or perfect trigonal planar but yeah i'll show you that in a second something to keep in mind is electron pair geometry this refers to both the bonding electron pairs and the lone electron pairs whereas molecular geometry is only the bonding electron pairs so for example this is a super basic example but if you have two hydrogens, you know they each carry one electron. And if they're put together, obviously the two electrons are being shared between the two molecules. So that's the shared electron versus lone pairs. So that would be the bonding electron pair because they're both bonded. Whereas lone pairs occur in something, let's say water, H2O. So in water, the oxygen has six valence electrons and it's bonded to two hydrogens, each of the hydrogens having one electron. And as we know from even like hydrogen bonding to hydrogen, the hydrogen only needs one other electron to complete. So in water, two of the electrons from the oxygen are shared with the hydrogen and then there are four electrons that are remaining. So those four electrons are grouped in the pairs of two, which are lone pairs. So now that we kind of got that out of the way, we need to start looking at this diagram. Um, there's really not much to explain. I mean, in terms of like the basic understanding, we can just see, okay, so number of electron dense areas, if we read this left to right, let's start at two. So two electron dense areas just means if you look at the red circle, two greens are coming off it, two green molecules. So those two areas are sharing electrons. And something like carbon dioxide has a linear kind of shape. Carbon dioxide has a double bond between both of the oxygens and the carbons. So the angle is 180 degrees. So for linear AX2 with no electrons, it will always be 180 degrees predicted angle. And linear is like the most basic one. So if we move on to three electron dense areas, then we can see the electron pair geometry. Trigonal planar is the electron pair geometry and the molecular geometry depends on if there's lone pairs or not. So just think that electron pair geometry doesn't account for any lone pairs basically disregards it whereas a molecular geometry basically takes all the lone pairs and subtracts them and looks at the 3d orientation because this would make sense since there's nothing bonded to those lone electrons so if we basically just don't look at them for a second and just look at the green molecules let's say for three electron dense areas and a trigonal planar for the electron pair geometry but there is a lone pair so the general formula would be ax2 e1 e being the one lone pair of electrons we can see if we take out the lone pair we just don't look at it for a second then it looks bent um that's the molecular geometry because if we look at it in a 3d space we're only looking at those molecules like the green and the red balls in this case since the lone electrons aren't really bonded to anything they affect how it bonds and the 3d shape in molecular geometry, it's more of the 3D space that the molecule's in, whereas the electron pair geometry considers that lone pair as technically another entity of its own, I guess, if you want to say it. So even though the electron pair geometry is a trigonal planar for bent three electron dense areas, with a lone electron, the molecular geometry is still bent because if you look at the red and green molecules, it obviously looks bent. That's because the lone pair repulses more, so it basically forces the molecule to bend. That kind of holds true for a lot of the other ones, so if you just keep going down the list for electron dense areas. No lone pairs, you still have a tetrahedral for both the electron pair geometry and the molecular geometry. Basically, once you just add an electron pair, then the molecular geometry changes, but the electron pair geometry doesn't change, only the molecular geometry changes. So if we look at, let's say, a trigonal pyramidal, there's one lone pair of electrons and the electron pair geometry stays the same because if we kind of look at the lone pair as considered one of the molecules, then it still gives a tetrahedral shape. But in the molecular geometry, we basically just cover up that lone electron and that is not the same as tetrahedral and in the 3D space. So we call it trigonal pyramidal. So honestly, a lot of it is memorization, but there's also an aspect to it of understanding, like for all the bent ones for molecular geometry, you can clearly see that it's basically the lone pair that's repulsing a lot more, making that molecule appear bent in the 3D space. So I'm just going to put on like a little cheat code on the screen. This is really helpful for drawing and stuff. So like the AX, AX, AX2, AX3, AX4 with the electron. And honestly, a lot of it is just memorization. It is theory. I mean, that's 
you know, what theory kind of is. And since I don't really want to get too in-depth with it because I just don't really want to start drawing and doing practice problems in a Minecraft channel. Like, okay, I have my limits. Be like biochemistry is a lot of discussing and talking about concepts that are applicable, whereas chemistry and like especially theory is more drawing and unless you guys want to watch me draw molecules, which is not like my forte. I don't enjoy chemistry solely as much as biochemistry with the cross between, you know, both applications and using the knowledge I already have. The last time that I looked at Vesper was only in the chemistry class that I took, which I don't have to take anymore after this. So I went into biochemistry and it was completely different. I had to draw molecules, but it wasn't like understanding the whole Vesper thing and everything. And even in OCHEM, you only need a general understanding of Vesper. It's not like something I feel like that's reoccurring unless you're specifically going into chemistry. But if you're going into something like biochemistry, a lot of the biochemistry classes, or at least from my experience, I didn't have to do any Vesper or anything. So this is just kind of like, I don't know, just a side thing that I like pulled out. I just like pulled out my old notes. I was like, okay, um, I mean, if you look at any diagram, you could probably analyze it. It's kind of self-explanatory. Like I can give an example. So like, let's see how BF3 is. So this is just like a classic example. So if we look on the periodic table, boron has three electrons because if you count from the left to the right, it's one, two, three in the second row. So three electrons. And yeah, that kind of corresponds to the shells so if you guys are also familiar so like 1s 1s2 2s 2s2 and then 2p 2p2 2p3 all the way up to 6 um yeah that's also kind of helpful because every time you go up reading left to right that's plus one electron so boron in this case has three electrons it's in the 2p1 boron is very special it's technically complete as octet it doesn't really have an octet but i mean like it'll be stable with three bonded electrons so if we have bf3 boron has three electrons so one two three if you like do a little thought diagram or something and fluorine if you count from left to right one two three four five six seven it has seven valence electrons so fluorine needs one more to complete octets because octets are the most common and it's basically you need eight electrons surrounding a molecule to make it stable without being like an ion or anything but we're not gonna go into that <laughs> Um, so very basic understanding, literally the one boron electron goes to one of the fluorines and it does this three times so you can see that it completes the fluorines octet and boron is complete because it's stable and the shape of it is a trigonal planar because it's AX3E0 and both the electron pair geometry and the molecular geometry of BF3 is a trigonal planar because if we look back to our little cheat sheet, the AX3E0, so no valence electrons floating by, essentially indicates to us that there are no lone pairs affecting the 3D space for the molecular geometry, so the trigonal planar is basically just three molecules around a central molecule. And if you look at the bond angles as well, it's 120 degrees, it's very simple. There's also a kind of little cheat sheet for the ideal bond angles. Um, honestly, that's also a little bit of just memorization as well because, I mean, theory is theory. For me, that's how I studied it when I was doing chemistry i'm honestly over it so i don't remember 100 percent but i'm pretty sure that without any electron pairs linear is 180 trigonal planar is 120 tetrahedral is 109.5 and trigonal by pyramidal is depends on what you're looking at so you can either be a 120 degrees because if you think about like the 3d space if there's both a 90 degree angle and a 120 degree angle so I mean both of those are for trigonal pure by pure middle and then for octahedral we can just see it's really nice 90 degrees for no lone pairs if you were to draw that out also in 3d kind of you can clearly see it just makes a right angle so that's super easy we can see for bent as well it's 109.5 you know similar to trigonal planar except we just took out you know that other molecule and put a lone pair instead and honestly, yeah, like there's something just kind of self-explanatory. I don't know. <laughs> I think there's like a 104.5 one as well for, okay, let me see. Okay, so 104.5, so something like uh, water, H2O, there's two lone electron pairs. So if we look on a little diagram, that would be under four electron dense areas and there'd be two lone electron pairs. So it would be AX2, E2, and then the two hydrogen bonds will have a 104.5 degrees ideal bond angle. These are just approximations, it can be 104.45 for the sake of just making it simple. We just use usually like 104.5 or whatever. So yeah, that's kind of like the best for in a nutshell. I don't really know how much I was supposed to explain for this. It's super basic for the intro level at least. I mean, I guess once you apply it more, it gets more difficult. But yeah, there's a lot more to it like hybridization, polarity exclusion principle, Huns, and off-ball principle, all of that great stuff like the off-ball hotel. I kind of touched a little bit on that in this video, but not too too much. 
I just don't really want to go down that road. It's not something that I've currently done. I did do it in the past. Um, and I'm gonna be real, I kind of just like crammed it and then like was done with it because it was just like a one one thing. It was just like one and done, you know? It's not like hard to understand. It's just you need to sit down and like look at it. It's a lot of theory. I don't know. I recommend watching Organic Chemistry Tutor for that kind of stuff. That and like Ochem, I really, I'm pretty sure the only reason why I succeeded was because of Organic Chemistry Tutor. Honestly, he has really awesome videos. Go go watch him um, if you actually like need a lot of help because this channel, I was kind of more dedicating towards like more biochemistry perspective, which is kind of a more recent futuristic look on the sciences versus like theory like Vesper is to me kind of dry like i generally don't enjoy it as much i don't know i was just i'm just like not as passionate about like theory and like the history and stuff but like i will do it it's just not my favorite and i know that's like a prerequisite for biochemistry but anyways yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video i was literally just rambling at this point i don't know i went very very basic with it like the basic as basic can get because there is so much more depth to this i just don't want to get into it because i'm like really tired right now too i don't know i'd rather like talk about like biochemistry things you know like things that are more applicable or like i don't know pertain to us like directly instead of like in theory you know and all that stuff but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video